Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining um, in this presentation at Beside Las Vegas. I, I'm thrilled to be here. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Besides for the opportunity. It's the first time uh, as a speaker. Uh, so let's dive in. Uh, this is the, the quick overview of the presentation. We're going to start with the introduction, and then we're going to uh, define some concepts that is important to understand the research. And next, we're going to see adversarial attacks. Um, by the end of the presentation, I will show you a, a real-world demonstration I also will provide uh, all that source code so that you can reproduce uh, the exp experiments. And by the end, we're going to conclude our presentation. So who am I? I'm a cybersecurity engineer at Thai Food um, with more than, more than 20 years of experience in networking and cybersecurity. Uh, I've been also focused on uh, machine learning for the past two years. Um, and also a master's student at the uh, University of Sao Paulo about iFood. iFood is the biggest uh, delivery food in Latin America. It operates in Brazil. Uh, it's a data-driven company since the beginning. Just to give you an idea, iFood has now more than, more than 2,000 uh, machine learning models running on, on production. Why am I here? Um, this presentation was designed um, by everyone, including those who have not yet uh, any prior uh, experience with machine learning. So uh, although this content is based on DOH, um, by the end of the presentation, I will, I will show you the generic algorithm so that you can attack any machine learning model, any is any machine learning model. So stay here. Uh, I'm sure that you can uh, get the, the, the techniques and the, what we will discuss here, OK? So um, starting in the 90s, um, in the 90s, attackers, they established um, DNS, DNS tunnels. Uh, between the written machines and and to the um, attacker machine, uh, the attackers would be able to exfiltrate data and do the common control. And here, it's a paper that uh, summarizes all the all this time. In 2010. Um, we got the first machine learning models to identify um, those tunnels. The, in the very beginning, uh, we got some neural networks, but now uh, the state of art models are um, ensemble models uh, like gradient boosting, extended gradient boost, boosting, and models like that. And today, uh, this is the scope of the, my research. We're going to attack those models so that we can bypass the, um, the model and the communication with going through the, the tunnel. Uh, I will show uh, how in a few moments. And also, we'll defend the model against those attacks. Now, uh, some basic con concepts. Um, we have a traditional DNS and the new DOH. DOH, uh, it's a DNS over HTTPS. Basically, uh, you have a, a DNS payload inside of the HTTPS payload. Uh, why is that? Because DOH, uh, it uh, solves many problems of the, of the, um, uh, the old uh, DNS like like privacy, privacy and eavesdropping, eavesdropping and, and things like that. Here's an example uh, of of um, DOH query using 
Cloudflare, the OH server. This image uh, is summarized the, um, the tunnel. What we have here, uh, in the red arrow, we have the um, actual malicious uh, tunnel. It, it uses just the um, DNS infrastructure. All the traffic is, is going through the tunnel using the DNS infrastructure. And in, in black arrows, we have the regular traffic, like web traffic and the regular DOH traffic here, okay? Now, um, this is the most common tools that you can create tunnels. Uh, all of them are open source. I prefer using DNS tip because uh, it's new, is written in Golang, so it's easy to understand. And all of our, and all of our experiments is based on DNS TT. Here is the um, big picture of DNS TT. In backend side, I have the applications that uh, sends the, the data to the, the tunnel. And on the other side, I have the um, application running on the client side. Uh, here, you could be, uh, for instance, a compromised machine. And here I have the uh, attacker machine. Now, I'm gonna show you the first demonstration. Uh, it's a minimum uh, DNS tunnel. Why? I'll show that because we're gonna use the same infrastructure to uh, to build our uh, main demonstration. Okay. Let pause here. In the left, in left column, we have um, the attacker machine. It's an EC2 instance running on AWS with the Elastic IP. Um, on the right side, I have the infected machine. I just log in on AWS, just to establish the, the tunnel. It's important to mention here that we don't have any model um, evaluating the, the connection. We're gonna discuss in a few moments, okay? Here's the net cat in the attacker machine. On the other side, we close the, the tunnel. Testing the communication, hi, and hi was received here on the other side. Okay. Ah, important. I will provide all the video in the repository, the video and the, and the presentation, okay? So um, talk about network features. Uh, we use um, network features from network flows. Basically, we're gonna get features from the, from the PCAP lib. Um, you, can, you can, for example, use TCP dump for getting those, those uh, features from network. Here's an example on how, how to get them. Um, you can use a tool called Dualizer, it's open source tool that can capture and convert your data in CSV format. And also you can use Dualizer to both capturing and converting on CSV format. Here's uh, the models that are, are state of the art. Uh, in the red is a gradient boosting model that we, we will build here and, 
and attack here. Now, uh, just to, to recap, or for those who don't know, the adversarial attack, just to summarize, our model is representing uh, the f function is our model, and in the x is our input, is our uh, f network features, and y is the label. Uh, in, in our case, it could be uh, benign connections or malicious connections from tunnel. When I when I uh, create some some perturbation in delta, we can um, we can do the inference again using those perturbation, and ultimately, ultimately I can uh, the model can classify can predict to uh, another class. So, for instance, I could have here a malicious connection here, and after perturbation. I could have, uh, I can have um, a benign flow. Uh, here's uh, an example use images. This image uh, is from the Goodfellow paper. Uh, on the left side, we have a panda. In the middle, we have um, a perturbation. It looks like a random bytes, but there's a logic behind it. Because when I s sum up the the two images, the third image is is the result of the of the sum. Um, at the end, the last image is classified as a gibbon, is a a kind of monkey. In Portuguese, is gibbon. <laughs> now, um, definition of white box. Um, Different from the a traditional pen test in in machine learning um, uh, lingo, white box is when the attacker has access to the model um, architecture, architecture and like the weights, um, the derivatives, and all the information about the model. In modern uh, attacks. The attacks are stated as a minimization a problem. Here we have a distortion and the loss. Distortion is uh, how big is our our perturbation, and the loss is um, how far I'm from my uh, how far I from the 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 target label. So here, for, uh, for example, my target label is benign, and, and my, my actual label is, is malicious. So alpha and beta are, are factors to uh, a threshold to, to say what, the, what factors can contribute more during the process of minimization. By the end, I have a array here of um, adversarial examples here after the, the, the minimization problem. On the other hand, in black box attack, I don't have access to the model architecture. I just have access to the inference uh, endpoint. Okay. So the equation, it, it, in this equation, I don't have the derivatives here. I just have the access to the the inference endpoint. So to implement our attacks, we're gonna use the ART framework. It's the most used uh, framework nowadays. Here's an example of how we can generate a black box attack. Um, we just install with pip, and then you can uh, load the model. You you create an object of the model, 
remember, it's a black box attack. This object, it guarantees that we just have access to the inference uh, endpoint, inference method of the model. And here is the, where is the actual attack uh, occurs, okay? So um, now, this is a special case of black box attack. It's called zero order optimization attack. Uh, this this kind of attack is um, is used when you don't have access to the deriv derivatives, or or um, when you can access to the derivative but is infeasible to calculate. So you can use zero order optimization attack. Why zero? Because you don't have access to the derivative, but you can't um, simulate uh, a derivative. In this case, the simulation is the difference between the, the actual, um, actual uh, inference and the, the perturbed inference. We use, um, and, for minimis, and for minimize, we use Adam optimizer here. Uh, if you w would like, we can discuss about the, about the min minimization process. We use b binary search to find the optimal uh, value of C here. And we use L2 norm to uh, calculate our uh, disturbation, okay. distortion. Sorry. Ah, this is called um, vanilla attack because it's from the the original zoo attack. So we call it vanilla because there is no modification if compared to the original attack. Okay. You can run this attack using the repository. This is the steps that that you can that you must must follow to to replicate those attacks and all the details you can find in the repository okay um the vanilla attack is um you're going to get high high success rate because the um, algorithm has freedom to attack but on the on the other hand you're gonna get some weird uh, result, like uh, negative time for for time-based features, uh, huge huge packet size like uh, giga and terabytes, and you and it attacks uh, complex uh, features like coefficient or variation of packet time. How do I uh, can instrument the the tool to uh, create the same result of the attack? It's impossible. And to solve this this problem, we came up with the target attack, the zoo target. This attack was um, was created during my research. Basically, uh, we we create more more two arguments that is in red here. The first argument is the, is the tunnel limit tools that say the minimum and minimum and maximum values of the of the features that I, I will attack. And the second new argument is the a feature list is an array that's containing all the features I I wanted to attack. After running this attack, you're gonna get um, low success rate, but that's okay um, because you can see all the results, uh, those attacks, and you just need a, a one instance of success. And having that, you can you can see uh, the values of the features, and you can uh, reproduce using your 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 tool to uh, accurate those those values to bypass the tunnel. Here 
here's a notebook to run the new attack. And now a generic algorithm to attack any module. We're gonna go through uh, that together with detail. And after that, I will show the demonstration. So um, the first step is having the tool. Um, it could be a DOH, a DOH, uh, a tunnel tool, but if you have another um, model at your attack, and it, if you have another tool, you can use those two. And in our case, we use DNSTT, okay? So DNSTT is our uh, main tool here in this case, but you can use any tool. Step two, you have, um, you need to um, create the, the connections using some tools for, for capturing like TCP dump, Wildchark, Scapy, or Audiolizer. And here, we use the um, TCP dump. In the repository, I give details to reproduce this. In step three, you have to identify which features to attack. Let me show you details here. In PCAP, um, features you have more than, you have um, a 28 possible features to attack, uh, which uh, I can choose. The best features are that you can modify, like uh, a packet size, um, response time, request time. So these are, these are, are the best features to choose. But it's important to mention that uh, the model must uh, use the same feature you are attacking uh, in the model, okay? It's the only requirement. Number four, you have to set limits of your tool. Uh, Here is the notebook that you can use to get, get the, the limits of your tool. Basically, you need just the specify the CSV file that notebook will calculate the limits of your tool. After that, you're gonna get th this file here with the limits of your tool for each feature. And after that, you can, uh, knowing the limits of your tool, the possibilities of your tool, you can define uh, greater values or, or small values for each one. Of course, um, you don't want to uh, add some negative numbers for, uh, for time uh, features here. Uh, here's an example of, of um, modify uh, limits. And for example, here is um, the first, the first is the, which features that flows by descent. In flows by descent, I put, Z 0 0.9, these data are, they are uh, normalized, so I put the, the maximum, not the maximum, but the close to the maximum value, 0 0.9, okay. After that, you execute your, att your attack, uh, the target zoo attack. Just run the notebook here, I'll show you. Here, we specify which features, which features to attack and then just run this, this attack. And number six, identify the most altered features, like uh, a top four, using absolute value. 
here. Um, the attack was able to attack uh, at 22 instances, and the foremost um, features was was that five. I'm sorry, five most. So last step is apply these values on on your tool. Okay. I'm gonna run a the final demo that we use this attack to bypass the the real scenario now. Let me explain here. Uh, in the left side, we have the attacker machine on AWS. Now is a is a new guy. In the middle, in the middle, we have um, our model and um, a script that loads loads uh, the model and that captures all the traffic. At the same time. It captures it, uh, convert th the features in the normalized format so that the the model can predict if if the the connection is benign or malicious. All that is available on the repository. For you. On the right side, I have the infected machine. Instead of using a netcat in the back end. We will use a Python script to uh, add in our f feature values that we, we got from attack. Okay, uh, login on AWS. Here, um, I just I just passed the model path. You can create your own model using your own data. Um, there's um, all the steps that you can do in order to replicate the experiments. So, as you can see, it loaded the gradient boosting model, a joblib file, and starting to. Uh, listen the connections, and now I start in the TCP dump on port four four three, and the tunnel is closed. So now I'm gonna use the um, the file to send data to the model. The same file I used. I used to I had to train the model. Let me show here. It just connect to the seven thousand port and generates data. Okay. And the model will will predict the connection. TCP dump here. Is predicting as as malicious as expected because we trained the model. Malicious. After that, I'm gonna use the feature values that we got from attack. That's important. You don't need to uh, to put the, the the exact value. 
what's the matter here is that uh, the magnitude of the of the value, like uh, ten, a uh, hundred, a uh, thousand. Okay. Important. Starting adding uh, one feature per time. If it doesn't work, you're gonna increase the number of the features until the model classificate as benign. Here, uh, we, we're gonna choose the, the packet size, 2,000 uh, bytes, 12 kilobytes. That's important. Uh, the flow time, by default, is, is two seconds. You can, you can change uh, inside of the Deolizer tool to modify uh, your flow. Our flow time is two seconds. And now we're going to put uh, two kilobytes as, as packet size. And the model will classify as benign because we could bypass the model. I'm gonna back and forth using benign and malicious. You can use the same technique for any model and it works. Okay. I'm gonna upload this video, so you can check with with your time the PLC. Okay. So to wrap up, this algorithm it can be applied for any model. This technique, the same attack. For defending uh, the most basic uh, uh, a technique to, to defend is uh, to train your model using uh, the same adversarial examples, which means that you're gonna get the features attacked and you use the same attack data to train your model. You can use um, um, another uh, suggestion is not to use features that are changeable by the user, like packet time uh, or any other time-based uh, feature, or uh, any feature that depends on the on, on the size of that user can can change. You can also use some auxiliary uh, model to uh, detect those kind of um, Modifications. Con for conclude, um, adding constraint in in the vanilla uh, zero of order attack, we could also we could to uh, we could uh, bypass the DOH model, and we could also able to create a generic algorithm to attack any model that you can, can use. Feature work. Our goal here, here is validate uh, the same technique with other kind of, 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 of um, problems, like um, the actual NIDS um, model. We can also, we wanted to identify uh, another feasible techniques to using other black box algorithms. 
and we are open for contributors. Uh, here's uh, a, a contact from Dr. Lorenzo and Dr. Julio. And all the source code here is available on the on this GitHub repository. Feel free for taking the pictures. And that's it. If people have questions, you can just come up to the mic right here. That might be the link. Yeah. Um, are there uh, snort or certificate? modules that will detect these type of uh, DOH tunnelings? I'm not sure. I'm sorry. I are there are there snort or certicata rules or modules which will detect? Yes. Um, certicata rules uh, was available in the 90s for uh, fraternal detection, but uh, they are rule-based uh, 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 rules, so they are they are limited but when you when you create the models, you have more 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 uh, flexibility. The rate of success is high. So, but if you don't have nothing, of course, go use uh, Suricata. That, that's okay. Thanks. Well done, Emmanuel. Great presentation. Amazing to see what's happening down there in Brazil at iFood. Fantastic work. Thank My you. impression is that you have a really complex framework to work with, at least for from, from a beginner's mindset, I would say. I just wanted to learn from you how generic the tools that you have created are currently so that it could be used for any sort of PCAP handling. So my question relates to PCAP. How generic is the framework currently uh, accepting the ingestion of PCAP feeds? Good question. Um, nowadays, PCAP basically is the st standard for the network models. So um, any paper uh, you're going to see, all the network features is based on, on PCAP. So uh, it's easy to, uh, to find tools that support uh, um, Epic app uh, features in the wild. <laughs> All right. Let me also mention, if I may, that Nelson Uto, our friend, is watching th on YouTube, so he sends kind regards to you. Oh, thanks. Um, and also, um, if I wanted to start, I, like I know cybersecurity, mm -hmm. I don't really understand machine models from um, a research perspective, pure research. What would be the first steps you would you would advise? towards general public? Uh, I'm kind of biased, but you can start using Kaggle. Uh, yeah. Kaggle, uh, you can, for instance, learn machine learning, basic machine learning, one-on-one machine learning, but also uh, you can uh, get uh, write-ups from uh, AI Village uh, CTF of machine learning. You can uh, learn a lot of with that. I, I learned <laughs> a lot uh, reading that, uh, even uh, at the beginning, uh, because you're going to get some uh, different uh, answers uh, with the same problem. And it is wonderful to learn. Uh, I see. And if I still may, sorry. Um, I understand this is like almost pure research, you don't really need to have a clear goal, but I would, would like to ask you, are you pursuing some sort of particular goal with this tool set that you're building and the contributions that you're making? Is there any research question that you want to answer with this platform that you're building? Mm, I don't know. Let me try to guess, let's say, do you want to improve a food security at a certain aspect of the platform by conducting this kind of research? Or is it's like open research where anyone can figure out what they want to do with your, mo your attack models? 
the goal here is to the open research so that uh, all the people in the world can contribute, can can uh, benefit of the of their research. So fantastic. Of course, Hopefully in the future, we I can food see. will will benefit from that, but. The main goal is uh, open the research for everyone. Yeah, as the as the the, the the gentleman said here before, eventually this could be part of some sort of intrusion detection improvement in the future, like tools such as, for example, the Snort and Suricat could benefit from any sort of improvement you're doing in the AI, AI field to improving detection engineering, maybe. Yes, Just but um, it's important to mention here that uh, uh, where can I find those kind of models? And for instance, I'm sure that uh, CrowdStrike runs that not in, in, in your machine, but in the, in the cloud. Uh, of course, uh, uh, much better than, yeah. than I, I did here. But it's a start point to, to learn things and in the future contribute for more uh, impact in uh, research. All right, thank you very much and congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you.